Good evening. Uh, welcome to the Town of Easton Taxation Aid Committee meeting. Um, it is May 13th at 5.06 p.m. Um, I'm going to read off some remote meeting procedures. Uh, in keeping with the ongoing emergency order from Governor Charlie Baker to limit gatherings and maximize social distancing, and under legislation passed to address remote board meetings during the emergency declaration, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by board and commission committee members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards quorum. The meeting will be broadcast live and recorded on ECAP. To use Zoom on a computer or mobile device, you will need to download the Zoom application at zoom.us and create an account or use one of the call-in numbers listed on the agenda. To join by telephone only, you will need the meeting ID. While, while conducting meetings remotely, we will endeavor to keep meeting operations as close to our standard procedures as possible. However, use of this platform will necess necessitate some additional meeting protocols. While the board members, town staff participants and applicants will be on video and audio, public participants will join the meeting muted and with no video feed from them. Public lines will be muted throughout the meeting to allow the board to conduct business and to eliminate background noise. For general meetings, and only for items under which the chair solicits public comment, members of the public participating in the Zoom meeting may submit a written question via text chat, provided they include their full name and address for the public record. The chair reserves the right to discard comments uh, submitted that are off topic or do not include name and address. Members of the uh, public viewing the meeting on ECAT may submit questions in writing via email to cahonan at easton.ma.us. The chair reserves the right to respond to questions during the live meeting, but may limit the time for such activities. Any question not addressed in the meeting may be answered afterwards via email and will be incorporated into the meeting minutes um, for the public record. All votes will be by roll call. When all business indicated on the agenda has been completed, the members will vote to adjoin, adjourn the meeting, signaling the end of the meeting and the termination of the ECAT recording. All participants will be disconnected from the meeting at that time. So we will just move right into the first item of the agenda which is to approve the meeting minutes from our last meeting on April 8th, 2021. I move to approve so the minutes I as I move written. that we approve. <laughs> Beat you. I, I second that. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes. Um, so the second item of discussion um, is the town council's recommendation on our application um, to use 80% of AMI. So Corey, I don't know if you want to start uh, with this. Sure. Thank you. Um, so I was able to uh, get a little more direction from town council and basically it came back that we can actually um, widen the margin of those who we can help if we choose to do so uh, by using this 80% of area median income. Um, and the exact numbers of that, I'll get you here in one minute. Um, I just had it and it went away on me. Uh, but anyway, it is a higher number than we originally had on our application. So, um, and let me get this information here. We can have a discussion and decide if, if that's something we'd like to do. It wasn't, uh, I believe it brought it into like the 
uh, mid 50,000 to high 50,000 income range for a single individual, which actually allows us to help quite a bit. Um, so based off of that vague description, while I search for the exact number, is there any discussion on whether we'd like to entertain that? Um, that was just recommended, like I said, we certainly can go stricter like we had planned, um, but we can also include this wider margin as well. Okay, and um, I think we lost Andrew again. Oh, did we? I don't see him. Yeah. I see a square, but it's blank. Yeah, but there's now. no, yeah. Okay, let's see if he comes back. Um, so it's low to mid 50s or mid to high 50s? It mid to high 50s, which I was actually surprised that that was really the only recommendation that uh, town council came back with was that we could be less strict in our scope, which I think it's a good thing. You know, the, uh, I do too. Andrew just, Andrew just texted me experiencing difficulties. So he's going to try to get back. Um, but in the meantime, we can discuss this. Um, but yeah, so basically that was really the only recommendation. They thought our definitions were, uh, on point for, you know, the objectives of the committee. Um, and he thought the application was, you know, it included everything that we needed. I think he thought it, um, if anything, it had more information than was needed to simply provide the assistance. But I think we want to keep, like we voted, you know, line by line, I think we'd like to keep the, that level of detail for the reasons we discussed, such as uh, outreach. I know for my office, it's good to identify people who are in certain categories or in need of certain assistance. Um, so. Yeah, so um, any discussion on on uh, increasing the amount, and I'll give you those exact numbers, like I said, in just a moment. Sure. Didn't you email them around to us, Corey? I think I did. Um, I can look. I don't know what happened to my plan here. I had. Uh, I'm on a different device tonight, too, so. Mm. All right, Andrew's back. I'm going to let him back in. So, yeah, you had sent us an email on April 21st, and the uh, it gave the household sizes with an income limits that were slightly above what we had. Um, we had uh, discussed originally. Family of one, 55, 950. Family of two, 63, 950. Uh, and then up from there for three, four, five, six, seven. Um, right. I don't know. Um, That's 80% of the AMI for Easton specifically, which I think is a good idea to, to as a benchmark. Yes, and that actually came from... Um, the uh, planning department. So that was also the recommendation to go through planning department on the latest AMI numbers in the actual, because I found through the census, the U.S. Census Bureau, they use a different, you know, obviously there's the U.S. AMI and then there's regional AMI and then each state and city and town have their own as well. So um, that that's actually what was given to me. Um, what's the subject on that email? I'm sorry, Linda, thank you. Subject is 80% uh, average median income. Okay. Oh, I found it. I appreciate it, thank you. Yep. Um, hey, Andrew, do you hear us now? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Sorry about that. I. Uh... Switch, switch devices so much better now. Oh, good. 
Yeah, you didn't miss much. I was look. I spent most of the time looking for this email that Linda just pointed out to me. So we're good. Um, Go so basically, the recommendation was that our application it looks good. Um, the guidelines look good, and that we were told that we could actually be less restrictive if we'd like to. Which, you know, the numbers uh, I emailed uh, on April twenty first, and basically. It would put a, a household size of one person. The income limit to qualify would be 55950 gross annual income. And a family of two, 63950 um, Three is 71950 and so on. Uh, kind of increases by about 8000 I'd say 8000 or slightly less each, each person added to the family after that. So it really, I mean... You know, a family of four, 79,900, I think we can all agree that, um, you know, maybe for a single family income, that's a, that's a, a good amount of money. But when you're, when you're getting up there, whether you have three children or one spouse, or um, I think those folks are the ones that we kind of pointed out in the beginning of our talks. Those are the folks that kind of fall through the cracks. They don't qualify for other programs and that's who we'd like to help. So I think, um, I guess I'd like to just make a motion that we accept the recommendations of town council and substitute our definition for the income limits with this recommendation of 80% of the area median income. I second that. Okay. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Um, uh, just to discuss first, um, do you have in front of you what the um, what our previous amounts were before we vote, just so we know what we're comparing to? I think we only. Sorry, go ahead, Corey. Oh no, I was going to ask if you if you had them. I'm sorry. Well, in my notes from previous meetings, I believe we only had two income categories: one for single at thirty eight six forty, and one for a couple at 52,260. So those are, you know, that gives it another little bit, which is nice. Yep, definitely. That, that gives it a fair amount. I mean, that gives us a lot more room to help more people with this, I think. Right, it doesn't take away from the ability to help those in that original category. It just kind of gives us more leeway, so. Right, and children in this town are expensive. <laughs> take it from me. Um, so just understand if we pass, would we, would you um, be adopting the idea that it would expand each amount, each member of the household, the, the amount would increase all the way down, or is it just one and then two, two or more? So this chart goes to seven. What was sent to me um, from Wayne, um, who is uh, affordable housing. Yeah, yeah, he's affordable housing um, in the town of East of the. Um, planning department, I believe. So okay. um, this is, you know, his official, basically it was recommended through town council that we consult with Wayne to get this, these figures and he, this is what he is given, so. Okay. All right, um, is there any more discussion before we vote on uh, Corey's motion? Nope. Okay, um, we'll do, uh, Roll call then. Um, Corey uh, Ahonen. Ahonen, yes. Um, Kometa. Kometa, yes. Scott. Scott, yes. Uh, Linda. Fox, yes. Megan. Megan, yes. Uh, Andrew, uh, no. The motion passes uh, five to one. All right, sounds good. Um, just to explain my vote, I, I would have just tweaked it a little bit, but everybody likes it, so up, you know, up we're, good, we're good to go. 
<laughs> up or down, Andrew? What? Up or down? Um, I just the the infinite number, uh, you know, going up to seven people on it. I I would have just I don't know. I'm 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 a little picky, so I probably would have uh, <laughs> just said either uh, put a category for one and then two or more. But um, that's me being picky. So um, yeah. you guys all well, you fine. guys all liked it, and I and and I think it's perfectly fine. I I like the idea of more wiggle room. So I'm, I'm, it's, I'm not vehemently opposed. Sounds good. And I uh, like the information that was given to us by uh, town council. It's always good to have their input. Yeah. Um, and also yeah. the zoning board. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's good to get numbers from people who do this for a living. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that, that part right. I do not disagree with. No. Um, good. Oh, hold on. I'm so I apologize sorry, real quick. that I switched devices here. It's okay. It's I'll edit perfect. the application and I'll, I'll send it back out to everybody. Yeah, that would be great. Um, all right, so uh, item three on the agenda is the discussion for uh, distributions for over six whether or not we would need to issue a 1099. And um, I think the genesis for this item is that we discussed it um, a little bit last time um, with Linda, and it was a conversation that had spawned, um, I think, with the finance director, Linda, where um, it goes back to how we wanted to handle um, handle it either as an exemption or or as more of a payment. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And I think you had some questions for Scott on that. So if you'd like to pick this item, that'd be great. Yep. I have not been able to find anything that says we, that exempts us from having to send the 1099 out for anything over six, $600, but I'm continuing to look. I have a message out to other treasurers in the state um, I also have a message to the other, you know, we have a list that we just post our questions. I also have a question about um, whether people are, are processing these as exemptions or whether they're processing these as payments on the real estate taxes. Um, and I didn't get any responses. So the next thing on my list, and I didn't have time to do it, I apologize, was simply to call some of the towns that are doing it and say, how do you handle it? And if um, they do use it, uh, apply it as an exemption, you know, what, uh, how do you do that? How, how precisely do you handle that um, uh, in your town? So, but I apologize. I didn't have time to reach out to other, to actually just pick up the phone and call people. So I'm gonna have to circle back on that, but um, maybe Scott knows more. Uh, yeah, but I think, I think the question for you, Scott, was that that um, I believe the finance director through was had some questions about um, how you would handle it as an exemption, um, because I think our understanding, right, Linda, is that if we were to do it as an exemption, that we wouldn't need to issue a 1099, correct? That's correct. So, so you had said, I think that, um, Scott, that there was a, a municipality who is handling it that way? Um, well, there's, there's several different uh, categories for exemptions uh, that you're probably familiar with, Linda, you know, as far as the different clauses. But, um, you know, the first thing that pops into my mind when we're talking about this is this, the senior work off. Now, right. we have senior work off in Easton now, correct me if I'm wrong, Linda. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether you're the person to ask for this or if it's Wendy. Are the people that are allowed on senior work off, do they get issued a 1099 or are they considered W-2s? They are employees. They're W-2 employees. Okay. All right. Um, I, I mean... I, I would say, honestly, 
that we'd have to issue something and that something would have to be a 1099. Um, unfortunately with Duxbury, uh, where I'm, where I work, we don't have this, um, this type of, uh, thing that we're putting to, together here in, in Easton. Um, we do have the senior work off and that's also handled as a, as an employee W2. Um, but anything over 600, uh, Andrew, I, I think you're a tax person, right? Mm -hmm. Um, doesn't that require a 1099, anything over six? Yeah, it would. Um, the, I think the question here is, you know, there's other exemptions, right? And if, yes, there are. And, if, and if we were to treat for other exemptions, you don't issue a 1099, right? You don't, you don't. Uh, so, but those, those are from the state. Okay. So the state issues those from a standpoint of you have to qualify, you know, mm -hmm. elderly, blind, veterans, uh, Corey, you're, you're familiar with. Uh, those are state approved exemptions. Now, is this considered a state approved exemptions? It, it doesn't sound like it because it sounds like it's not mandated. You, you're going to have to excuse me. I'm taking this, this Zoom on the side of the road, believe it or not. <laughs> um, so um, this is something that's approved by each and individual town. So it's not mandated by the state. So I think that would be a good question for town council uh, or um, somebody in the, the DLS, uh, which is the Division of Local Services, uh, which is also a subcategory of the DOR. Um, I think if I could just chime in real quick, I think yeah. the difference here is also, this isn't so much of an abatement or an exemption as it is an assistance fund. Um, I don't know. I just, I most liken this to my veterans discretionary fund, which is a, you know, once every so often assistance fund for the individual um, who meets the criteria outlined in a, a guideline, just like the one that we have developed. I don't use an application, but I do have a set of criteria that they meet. Um, I just, I don't know. I mean, the difference would be that this, if we give this to people in the form of a deduction on their taxes, can we still refer to it as not an, an abatement, if that makes sense? Well, because we don't want to give them cash, right? We don't want to give them a check it. or cash for the amount because who knows if it goes to the real estate, which it's meant to go to, the real estate taxes. Um, is there a way to apply a negative amount to a real estate, basically an, an abatement, um, without issuing some form of 1099 or? Uh, you, uh, lo logistically, yes, you can. Whether that's proper or not is the question, I think, that, uh, you know, the town, right. uh, if it's written out as a, um, you know, what I envision is, say there's, you know, 12 people who are going to get $1,000 exemptions, we actually get a check from the town that's written against our fund, and okay. then I apply it to those people's, I apply it just like I would apply a payment to their real estate taxes. Yeah. Okay. That's how, I mean, that's, but then we're, we're saying we don't know if on the back end there needs to be some sort of receipt or documentation that they received it, such as the tax forms. Well, the, there would be a receipt cause it would become part of their real estate tax record. True. So there okay. would be that receipt. It's just that as it goes through accounting, Accounting has to decide, uh, you know, most people who are paid more than $600, if they're individuals, are getting a 1099, unless right. it's a refund of, you know, unless, you know, except for, you know, I'm sure there's a plenty of different circumstances, but just in general, um, it becomes a gift. And uh, 
that becomes taxable over six hundred dollars. And see, and that's ninety nine. That's the additional can't. piece is, is that we have to actually charge it from our account, whereas the other abatements, such as the 22 series of veterans, it's like it's like you just pay less, and it's there's no actual money moved. It's just right. less collected. Right. right? Scott, Which you're is, muted. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I was. Um, yeah. Something like that, what I can do, Linda, I can try reaching somebody at the DLS tomorrow and ask this very question, um, you know, again, where it's not a state mandate and it's town approved, I don't know how they're going to respond to it, but you know something, um, they have basically attorneys uh, of the day. And if I'm lucky enough tomorrow or Monday, uh, I might be able to get a call back by actually posing this very question um, as opposed to calling multiple towns because you know, you'll probably find that multiple towns are gonna do things multiply different ways. So if we go directly to the, um, to the people that actually put this program out there for the towns, uh, we might we might hit a home run and we might get our question answered pretty easily. So if that's okay with everybody here, I'll make a few calls tomorrow to the DLS and see if I can get a an attorney there that can actually respond to this question. And if I do, I can email Corey and uh, everybody here just to let you know what I did find out. <laughs> if that will help. Yeah, that would be great. And uh, yeah. if just for your uh, awareness when you mention this, uh, I mean, it does derive from the Massachusetts general laws. It's a, you know, uh, chapter 60 of the MGL. Um, yeah, it's is article, it was, or what is it? Uh, through section 3D. Section What's 3D? That? Section, section 3D. 3D? 3 delta 3D of chapter 60 yep. of the MGL. Okay. So, I mean, it is a pretty, you know, I think it's, it's pretty standardized as far as that goes, but then when the towns adopt it, they can make little mm -hmm. tweaks to implement for their community. Right. As I said, my biggest concern is different communities may be di doing different things. So at least we can get some guidance from the DOR, DLS. And, um, you know, if I can get somebody tomorrow, I'll put something out to everybody here. If not, uh, it might push into Monday because sometimes, you know, you're lucky and you get somebody and other times you're lucky to get a call two days later. Mm -hmm. So um, has anybody it, read this? Sorry, Scott, I didn't mean to interrupt. Has anyone read this general law chapter 60 section 3D? There may be some answers in it. Uh, I, no. I'll read it. I'll take the time to read it and just see what they have to say in regards to taxation on uh, yeah, it's, if it's in there. Not. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it's not. Has anyone read it? I feel like. No. Yes. Oh, you yeah. have. Okay. Yeah. I have as well. It's. It's really. It's really kind of an open-ended, as I remember it, an open-ended paragraph, um, okay. allowing towns to to implement at their will. I mean, okay. the only guidance is really. Um, is really that it be for um, elderly and disabled and mm -hmm. that you can put a checkbox on your bills, um, mm -hmm. if I remember it. Okay. But um, yeah, so the, I think to, to wrap up this, this item, I, I think it's okay right now to leave this as an open discussion um, because we have a, a little ways to go before we, um, this would become an issue um, because we we still need to raise funds and then to to give funds and then and then this step would come in. Um, I mean, my my thought is that we probably, unfortunately, would have to issue a 1099, but I think we should explore whatever options we have first. Um, so we'll just Agreed. put it. We'll, we'll let everybody go and, and look into it. Um, and 
we'll we'll pick it up at another time. Um, so, unless there's any other discussion, uh, I'll move us forward. Um, Corey, am I allowed to take um, <laughs> am I allowed to take items out of order on the agenda? Because I'd like to I'd like to get an update on the online payment before we discuss fundraising. Um, because I yeah. think it it kind of uh, proceed it informs the other topics. I think that's okay to do that. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna skip from I'm gonna skip ahead to uh, item six, an update on the status of online payment capabilities, and then we will come back um, to the flyer and fundraising topics. Um, Linda, do you have an update for us here? So I do have an update and it's a lot, it apparently has become, or it is much more complicated than um, we expected. The, although the city of Newton does have the online capability, payment capability, uh, and I asked a long, quite some time ago, I asked uh, our payment processor, city hall systems to allow us the same thing on it. Um, they have to, I don't know why it takes so long. I, I've asked them a couple of times how they're doing and they, it's not complete yet. But um, the other part of the equation is making sure that our software can recognize, like when you make an online payment, that comes to the town elect, in an electronic file, mm -hmm. um, that payment. We receive a file, an electronic file, and then we process the payments from the file. Well there's an assumption made that our software, our collection software, can accommodate this new type of um, uh, donation. Um, our software right now is, to, is set up to accommodate a bunch of different types of taxes, but not fees. And that apparently is going to be a problem from the software end of things, our software. So even if our payment processor um, does get something to us or get something finalized soon, um, they then have to run it by the software company. And the software company might have problems creating the capability for us to receive those payments electronically, uh, or at least not without a, a cost. They can do it, but there may be a cost okay. associated. So that's not good news where it is, where the online payments are concerned. Okay, so it sounds it sounds to me like it's. I mean, it sounds to me like there could be a workaround here, with with the software company, if because all 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 I mean maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but I would think that what we essentially just need to do is identify the amount, and separate it from the other the other bill payments, right? I mean, we're not, um, we're not hitting it against, against, uh, you know, um, accounts receivable or anything like that uh, against an, a bill. Um, we just need something that denotes well, and actually, a donation, right? Or, and actually or is that, that the problem? Is, and actually that is the problem. There is no bill associated with it. All of the software is set up to, to, to associate everything with a bill. Um, now, could you call the bill something else? Um, sort of some generic type of name. Uh, I did run that by the software company. Um, but until we actually see what the, uh, the payment processor can, what they have, uh, I didn't want to go too, I didn't want to wander too far into the weeds with the, um, with the software company, not knowing what the payment processor was going to have. Okay. But that is the problem. There's no bill, there's no bill associated. So when we download everything, the system will get stuck because there's nothing, there is no bill to assign it to. And it has to, and the software is designed to apply a dollar amount to a bill. But um, you mentioned the city of Newton. You don't happen to have any friends over there, do you? <laughs> Not in Newton. Not in Newton. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm wondering, 
what software other people use if there's someone that uses the same software as us um because we're not reinventing the wheel here yeah um, um sadly uh municipal software is um not there isn't very many different types of municipal finance software um and we have one that is probably only used by well, I don't know how many people in Massachusetts, but not too many and, and not Newton, I'm sure. Okay. Um, I will double check with them. I'll give them a call. They're on my list to call with the other question. Yeah, yeah. if you don't mind. And um, yep. I mean, I, you know, I should have said this before too, but I, I you know, um, I feel like a lot of these items, Linda, are falling on you. Um, to call and follow up. I'm available to make phone calls as well on behalf okay. of the committee if you need. Um, I don't mind it at all. Um, so, because, you know, we're-, we're Linda, we're, I'm, you know, I'm available so. as well. Okay. I don't want everything to fall on okay. you. Yeah. All right. So, you but, just happen, I assume you have some contacts in those offices. Yep. But yep. I'll certainly tell them I'm calling on your behalf. You yeah. know. I'm sure that they would share the information with with anybody, but that's yeah, so I, I mean, I guess so I wonder if the issue has something to do with with the amount too, because I'm thinking about my experience as a taxpayer, right? So you go in, you pick, you type in a bill number, right? So it probably just and it and it pulls up your amount and says this is the amount associated with that bill or that account. So maybe that's maybe that's the crux of it. Um, is that it's just designed to accept those fields and to reference those accounts? Yes. Uh, well, and if you, um, I was going to say, you could anybody could probably go to Newton's website and then you you follow their links to to donate, and it just comes up if anybody's been on the online payment portal. It, it just has, you know, do you want to pay real estate, excise, water, trash, or, you know, whatever, personal property. And then there's another category called donations, and you mm -hmm. click into that. Um, and then you select who you want to donate to. They have a number of people, a number of organizations, you know, set up. Um, I'll take a look at that tomorrow, Linda. Yeah, okay. Or to later on tonight or tomorrow. Sure. Yeah. And just see yeah. how it functions. It looks pretty nice on their website. So I was I was hoping <laughs> yeah. I was hoping that we could just do a copy yeah. and paste. Yeah, uh, well, uh, that's why I was a little surprised. Yeah. You know, I, I reached out to City Hall Systems a long time ago, and it's City Hall Systems who did the our or our payment processor is also Newton's, which is mm -hmm. you know, so it should be kind of easy just to sort of I'm not a computer person, but you think it would yeah. be kind of easy to duplicate what you've already done and and yeah. have it available. Yeah, so I think I think that the first call should be to the software system because maybe they just say, Yeah, do do X, Y, and Z, you know. Um, or maybe they come back and they say, Nope, you're not you're not signed up for that package. <laughs> right. Um, right. So that I think that's probably the first road to go down. It's well, the, well, it's a the, little disheartening that it's taken till now to yes. for for the and I'm not I'm not blaming anyone on this call. No. It's the city hall systems to tell us that it it's up to your software. Well, um, it, it it's actually the software people um, that I'm sort of at a dead end with because I kind of can't go any further with them until I can see what city hall systems city hall systems which is the payment processor, they're mm -hmm. aware of my concerns and they're aware of my conversation with Softright. Softright is our software company. Yep. So they're aware of my conversations with them. They're aware that I said, you know, is there going to be a cost to, to you doing it? Because Softright is telling me there might be a cost to them doing whatever they're doing over there you know, creating new whatever. Um, and he said, no, it's just he's in the process of doing it. So they're, they're aware 
I'll reach out to them again tomorrow. I just I just was uh, talked to them last week, probably uh, middle of the week. So it's been about a week. So I, I, I could reach out again. Keep poking them. Yeah, I would appreciate that. And yep. If you need anybody on the committee's help, I, I think we're all available okay. to make phone calls and emails. Yep. So, um, Linda, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Um, on City Hall Systems, you know, if you do your online real estate tax payment, yep, there's a pro there's a processing fee. I forget what Easton's processing fee is. Um, does that processing fee entirely go to City Hall Systems, or does some of that go to the town of Easton? No, most most if not all of that goes to the credit card companies. Those okay, are credit for the card processing. Fees. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, okay. there there is a fifty cent. Um, a 50 cent if you link it into your um, bank, link it into your checking account. Yeah. Um, and what I would do is see if uh, Unibank would consider waiving. They can't waive the credit card fees because right. Unibank eventually gets them, uh, not Unibank, but um, uh, City Hall Systems is Rockland Bank. Uh, Rockland okay. Bank can't um, waive the credit card fees, but I'm wondering if they could waive you know, the, the checking account fee. Mm. Yeah. I think you're, you're following where I was, where yeah. I was attempting yes. to go. Yeah. Cause your hundred dollar donation or whatever is now going to cost 105 or whatever. Right. Right. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll move on unless anybody has any other specific, uh, questions or comments on the online payment, um, I'll kick us off on the, the next item, which was um, adding a flyer to the municipal bills. Um, so you know, I'll start with this one. So the idea um, originally, um, as we discussed, was to, to put a flyer in some of the municipal bills that we're going to send out. The I think in our last meeting, not everybody was there, but in our last meeting, we discussed that in July. Um, yeah. Linda, you'll remind me what's going on in July, the real estate bills. Yes. Um, and that if we were to, the idea was that if we were to approve of a template today or relatively soon, that we may be able to make the run for the real estate bills. Yep. So there are a few uh, item points of discussion for that. Um, the first one um, I would like to bring up is that uh, how would everybody, and this is kind of like an unofficial poll, should, do you guys feel like we should move forward with sending out flyers and things like that before we have the online payment capability? Um, because I, I feel like we will increase the amount of donations we get if we can solicit online, because not solicit, um, receive payments online. Um, but I don't know if that's worth delaying the process. Um, so what is everybody's thought on that? Um, just should we send out a, a flyer and, and ask for checks or um, should we hold off a little longer? What do people think? I think if we go the route of sending a flyer out right now with the, the tax bills coming up, um, I think that might really wreak havoc for uh, for Linda, correct me if I'm wrong, Linda. Um, what uh, if well, definitely if we um, if we mention something about being able to donate online, that would just cause frustration for people. Um, but um, but I'm prepared to take donations uh, at any time right now. Okay, via check via check. Yeah. I think I think the only thing that would cause an issue for for Linda is is if someone were to pay um 
not write a separate check for their right. tax and their um, donation. Right. And in in the flyer that that when I mean people don't obviously read everything that's in front of them, but right. uh, uh, so some people will send in one check, I'm sure. But uh, in the flyer that Linda drew up, she asked for separate checks, so. Yeah. Um, we would be somewhat covered there. And we can handle it as so long as we know that that extra money is in the check, we can apply it properly. The right. problem is that if people send either um, just add money to their online payment or their online, their, their bank payment check, which um, are usually pretty scant on details, or if they send it to the lockbox, the lockbox won't know anything about this. The lockbox is just a processing center and they're yep. just, um, they're not um, doing anything but taking a, a, a check and applying it to an account. You know, they don't, they don't have any other detail on the account. So yeah, when it comes to me, we, we can handle it. Have we thought about, and I know in this last meeting, like a Venmo account or like a cash app account that we could open up, that we could cash app? We've, we've, the Venmo has been, in, been discussed. We can't use Venmo because it's only for personal for personal use um i don't know if cash app is that's another don't one know about, i actually like cash app better don't know about cash app i'd have to there's been some problems with some of the payment processing um the very convenient payment processing um methods because they don't meet the criteria that we have to okay right. yeah. i was just thinking yeah. i yep. appreciate you thinking out of the box that's i didn't think of that yep Linda, what would it look like for you if someone, or not necessarily you, but any of your staff that have to, basically they receive a check that, you know, say it was $500 and the person said, oh, I want to donate a hundred extra dollars. So they wrote one check for $600. And uh, what would that look like for you or your team? Like, would they, I mean, I assume they would catch that it's a hundred dollars more than what they owe. Um, they or how would that work? They would, but if it was if it was not specified pretty clearly uh, that they wanted the extra hundred dollars to go somewhere else, we would mm -hmm. put the whole thing on their real estate bill, which is why I need the the yeah. separate checks. Um, yeah. And then and and you know I've never lived through how this works in in the, in real collectors' lives, but um, I can see how it could be messy. Yeah. But I mean, we can do we're processing things manually if someone says apply and we often get checks here's my water trash and real estate bill and can you know just apply them huh. and we can do it and similarly we just take a hundred dollars and put it on the donation um because everything's manual and we can do that the only, the problem comes where we don't realize that included in this check and and um you know is something for the for the fund that we don't know about uh, because people right. don't always pay what is due or the, the numbers don't right. always make sense. They often don't make complete sense. So we you right. know, are in the habit of just applying payments to, to the best of what we can see in front of us. So you would right. need like something in the memo line or something yeah. written on the bill. Yeah. Or you some sort of hint. Yes. Um, okay. Yes. And um, bearing in mind too, sadly, or maybe not so sadly, depending upon how you look at it, um, after living through a year of COVID, we've really encouraged people to do things online. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fewer payments I get here, it's better for us in this committee. Right. But as a collector, I would rather that you pay your bills some other way rather than having us you know, manually enter them into the system. We've got better ways, but um, so unfortunately, like my collector hat needs to point in two different directions on that one. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think my main concern was um, just you being stuck with, oh man, I have to call these hundred people who tried to donate and clarify what they want to do with this, or I have to contact them somehow, or I have to. Yeah, no. If it's not clear, we'll simply apply it to whatever appears to be due. Okay. Uh, and, and if there's nothing due, we return it to the person. 
and we say, you know, you've got nothing to do, um, either be more clear with what you want us to do with this check or um, here it is, you know, here's your money back because you have right. nothing to do. So, I mean, knowing, knowing that and hearing, basically hearing the best case scenario, the worst case scenario, and then what might also happen. Um, and just to explain that best case scenario is they follow the instructions and do two yeah. separate or yeah. do one online transaction and mail in a check. Um, the worst case scenario is they put it all on one check with no information. And the other thing is they put it all on one check, but they give the information, but you can still make something of it. Yeah. Is that okay. Yep. Yeah. So knowing, knowing those three potential outcomes, I would say we, I think we should get going on the advertising for this. Um, as long as you're okay with it, I don't want to put you in a situation yeah. where you're stuck with no. extra work because of the confusion. Nope. Uh, you know, this, it's, it's kind of an unknown and uh, um, I'm hopeful that before we put this thing in the mail, that we would have an answer about the online payments. Um, but heck, we might as well July. get it going. Get it going and get it going. Yeah. So for the July bills, um, I need to have everything to the printers by probably June fifteenth. So another month. Yep. And again, um, not to push too much, but um, yeah, that's my. I think my opinion on the the question of whether we should go forward now or wait. Uh, I think that's what I'll go with. Yeah, I don't have I'm, a problem with now. I'm sorry, what's that? I don't have a problem. I do not have a problem with just going forward right now. Okay. Any, anyone else um, thoughts on that? Uh, actually, the only, the, only, um, the only reservation is that that's assuming that we've had a meeting with the Board of Selectmen, Select Board. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's also something we discussed in, in last meeting um, was kind of like a, a, an ideal timeline of how this would work is um, we would discuss a, a flyer today or, you know, we could we could call a, a short meeting in a week or two and, and discuss a, a flyer or something like that if we run out of time tonight. And then what we would do is um, I would meet with the select board um, and show them the application, um, show them the flyer, tell them you know you know what we're thinking and and how we'd like to proceed, um, and uh, and do all this hopefully do all this before June fifteenth. Um, so it's there's um, kind of a uh, there's a timeline. It's it's not super tight, but you know when there's only one meeting a week and we meet so frequently, um, we would have to move pretty quickly. Um, I agree with Corey. I would like to start um, getting donations because I, I think I think um, while ideally it would be nice for people to donate online, especially you know, my hope was that um, we could we could use some online resources as well to get the word out about this. Um, it would be nice if people could just click a couple buttons, but we can always we can always go go back out and ask for ask for more in a couple of months once this is available. Um, so I it's 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 not ideal, but but I think I think it's a good time. You know, July first is a good time to get bills out there to start getting donations and and get rolling. So anybody else? Any reservations on that? Everybody okay with the idea of a flyer going out in July asking for checks? Yeah. Uh, this is Scott. Go ahead, Meg. No, I, I, I agree. I think we should get on it as soon as okay. possible. Okay. Okay. I agree too. As longer as long as Linda is okay with it as well. Okay. All right. Um, Kometa, you're the only one not to say anything, so I don't want you to be left out. Yeah, I think we should go ahead with it right away while we okay. are still looking forward on how to go about the online payment. Okay, yeah. great. So, um, all right, that's our plan. Let's 
dig into there's two other things in this in this topic and i don't want to keep everybody forever um we can always call another meeting in a couple weeks but the other thing linda will we need money to fund this um flyer out of our own account or or do we, are we still kind of unsure on that no uh, I did. I did find out that we um, we will not. Yeah. We will not. Awesome. Pay for that. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> that's great. More money to serve our, our yes. purpose. Yes. Um, that's great news. Okay. Um, so then, I don't. Did everybody? I. It was a last minute email. I sent it at maybe four thirty today. Um, did everybody have a chance to look at the sample flyer that um, Linda sent out? Yeah. And we can. So um, I will just kind of kind of read, you know, I can read it. I don't know if anybody's on a laptop and they have the ability to share their screen and show it. Um, I'm not on a laptop anymore. That's what I was trying to do before and nobody can oh. Oh, see oh. or hear me. <laughs> Let me try to do that real quick. Hold on a second. Um, Let me know if I need to like make you a host or anything. Uh, let's see. All right. So. I mean, I can always just re read it off, but. Um... Let me try to do this. If I can um, stop or well, share screen. Ooh. Um... Oh, there it is. How about that? Okay, can you see yep. that? Yep. Yes. Yeah, perfect. So that's a pretty that's a pretty basic um, insert. I, I had mentioned it's just a little weird thing stuck in my head. Um, when I first did this, something I seem to remember that the form has to be approved by the Department of Revenue don't know where that and I can't find so I could be that could be a wrong memory. I could be misremembering something but this is a very basic uh, formatted uh, very basically formatted um, insert and it would come out on like one third of a sheet big and it would just get stuck in with um, the real estate bills uh, on mm -hmm. colored paper or something so that it stuck out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, so um, I think this is good too because this would also having those boxes that you can check would solve that um, overpayment problem. Yes. The one with the one check problem. Yeah. Someone just writes in an amount there, then we know what their intentions are. Right. It's like a next, a second level of insurance. Oh, yes. Bill. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, so could, we, could just, we make could we make please include a separate check made payable to the town of Easton, either bolder or bigger or separate check in like highlighted in red or something yeah. that really brings attention to it, or is that like too much for the town? You know what I mean? Like, is it not going to be approved? I like the idea of bold or or capitalized or something. Yeah, um, like bold and italicized and. Yeah, because that's Maybe a bigger font, you know, like just a bigger um, letter. Yeah, that won't hurt. I, and uh, I don't. Um, so the the other suggestion that I would make. Um, is on the second and and again i'm a picky person sometimes so 
on the second line there, uh, our purpose is to help uh, low-income seniors, disabled citizens to continue to live in Easton by helping them pay some of the real estate tax. Actually, I, you know, that's a pretty that's a pretty good sentence. I think what I was going to say is is something along the lines of all donations will go towards uh, low-income seniors and disabled citizens. Um, uh, and, and instead of say, pay some of their real estate tax towards their real estate tax. So something like um, all donations will go towards helping low-income seniors and disabled citizens uh, offset or pay some of their real estate tax bill, something to that effect. I'm workshopping here, so I don't know um, if I'm being overly picky or if anyone has uh, thoughts on that. I just noticed uh, the spelling error and on the first, I just wanted to point it out because I'm like the queen of sending things out with spelling errors <laughs> in them. I don't know how I noticed it, but it's approved VY, it should be VY, the citizens of Easton, uh, in the first sentence. I have to find, oops. I, you don't have to do it right now, Linda, if you don't mind. Yep, but I can. I, for some reason, I, don't, I didn't save my Word copy of that. It's in my document somewhere. I just have to find it. Uh, so I can't, like, make changes on the fly here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you don't have to do it right now. Yep, way. yep. Um, like, I like that last sentence there. Just to remind, you know, we're only able to help others by using donations from citizens like you. I think that's, like, a nice... Yeah, yeah. just kind of pull at the heartstrings a little. Right. Uh, is the do you want that in with where did you want that on there? After the please include a separate check sentence. I'm sorry, which who who am I using? The, the sentence about um what Corey just said. <laughs> oh no, I was only just saying I like it. I did I didn't yeah. say it. <laughs> It's a nice, my, it's a nice sentiment. Yeah, um, my own. I think the only suggestions for changes, uh, Linda, are to draw more attention to please include separate check. Um, to fix the spelling error on the first line, and then uh, mine was just to change the wording of the sen second sentence, um, just saying all donations will go towards disabled citizens uh, to, you know, just instead of saying our purposes. Um, okay. Um, and something else real quick when, when you're done. Um, and I don't know what everybody thinks about this or if it's, if it's something we can do. I haven't done it since I've worked in the town. Um, but I've done it in previous roles, use like a, uh, tiny URL and basically, you know, we could call it like Easton, uh, Easton real estate tax aid or Easton taxation aid, um, to basically shorten that. So someone looking at the flyer doesn't have to type all that in. Um, and that's something I could try to do. I don't know. Does any, Linda, do you have any knowledge of being able to use that or is that? Being able to use uh, a shorter version of the name, yeah. So it's called like a it's called like tiny URL. It's a website that generates like a smaller URL using like you can take that full oh. HTTPS and like shorten yes. it in like Eastern Tax Help or whatever you yes. want, to call it. and um, that way they can type it into the. It's just easier for the person who's reading it to type because in reality, I don't know if someone. Is going to be able to look at that and say like, all right, yeah, let me go visit that website and type all that in. I don't know if it's, and that's something I could try to do. Do you know about that? I don't know about that. Okay. I don't know about tiny URLs. I don't know if we're able to use that or not to modify okay. town websites, but I could find out. I could talk to Mike maybe in Deltano and find out. Yep. Okay. Um. So do we uh, do we want to do 
do we want to um, kind of accept this form as is or 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 maybe what we could do is make a few edits um, have a meeting in a little bit um, in a couple weeks and then and then vote on it um, then or just just kind of workshop it through email a little bit I or think we should is this kind of good to go Corey sorry I think we could probably work it out through email um, yeah. if everybody's okay with that yeah yeah I like that um, that I think it's just a few changes here or there you know you can look into the URL thing um, you know maybe work on some of the language maybe not um, you know as long as there's a checkbox where people can mark how much they're going to give that's the important part um, yeah but is it is uh, everybody everybody okay with the idea that you know the general idea of this flyer will will print it onto some sort of color bright colored paper hopefully and include it in the real estate bills and any other objections or questions about the language or anything else you'd like to include include or remove I think it looks good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I think you did a good job, Linda. Cool. Pretty basic. Yeah. Yeah, short, short and sweet and to the point. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Okay. So let me uh I don't know how to undo this now. Let me see. Oh, stop sharing. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. So then I'll just move on to the next um the next item. And we don't need to spend too much time on it. Um, is is fundraising in general? Um, I just kind of wanted to start the ball discussing other ideas for fundraising um, and awareness, um, and have a quick discussion on it. Um, I think the the main way of receiving funds is going to be these flyers, um, but I think. Awareness is going to be a big part of it as well. Um, I know that Easton has a, a pretty good social media presence. Um, and I don't know if anyone has experience with that, but that personally is what I'd like to leverage. Um, that would be easier, you know, with the online payments, but we could still let people know uh, through, through a Facebook post or something like that. Um, this is coming your way. This committee set up. We're we're good to take donations. This is what we're doing. Um, so, uh, on that first, it, you know, Corey or anybody else, um, do you guys know who manages this Eason social media accounts? What kind of the procedures are there, or how to kind of get get in front of them on um, items like this? Yeah, so this kind of ties back to, um, so it's the town administrator's office and it's the assistant town administrator who I go through um, to post stuff on the town Facebook page and they have certain requirements. Um, I don't know if someone else knows exactly what they are, feel free to chime in. But, um, you know, I usually I'll post on there about Memorial Day or Veterans Day or just you know like community events or you know i think mm -hmm. this may also be something that fits you know i've posted on there about veterans benefits through the town uh, other monetary benefits so i i'd say it would probably fit the criteria um but this kind of ties back to you know we definitely would need to present to the select board before we did something like that um but that's i mean that's something we could do easily so yeah um yeah i i'm i'm i think um on my to-do list is to get on the agenda after this um so um and that'll be you know i, I can bring that up as well um but i think this would be something that would be appropriate and we could go over the language as well um just kind of saying this is what this is what the town voted on. This is 
what we're doing. Yeah. You know, he, here's how you help out if, if you're interested. And, right. Um, and just kind of not, not overly pushy or flashy, just kind of an, an announcement. Um, and I don't know if there's any other, I mean, I think maybe it's just my age, but I feel like most people get their news on, on Facebook these days, uh, through different posts and stuff like that. I don't know if there's anyone else, um, you know, who kind of assumes a a public affairs role that kind of talks to, you know, would, would do a press release or things like that. Um, so there's there's the town crier which surprisingly a lot of people get their news through there as well for town happenings um that goes out as an email um every friday and you get it to the i get the email we get the emails every week to say when we need to post it by but essentially what you would do for a facebook post we just put that in a a plain text and that would be included that could be included in the town crier Mm. um you know, we could make flyers. Um, we have newsletters. So, like, I have a newsletter for the veterans. Uh, we have a – the coordinator is a senior newsletter for the Council on Aging. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, st- you know, things like that. Yeah, I mean, that – I just – I just kind of – I mean, the way I think of it is I would just, like, when we send out these – um flyers is to just kind of leverage all of our resources at once um everybody you know everybody who has some sort of platform to let someone know that this exists and that you can contribute we let them know and we ask them politely if they wouldn't mind um and so i i think that because we we kind of I, I think we can use it to our advantage that this is new, um, mm-hmm. you know, um, so we can form it as, as an announcement. We won't really have that advantage in future years. Um, you know, we might have to get a little more creative on fundraising, but I don't know, like, um, it's just food for thought. You know, if you, if you, um, in your interactions with the town or if we could, um, I like the idea of the what you said about the senior um, the senior newsletter. I think it was um, because it it involves senior citizens the most. Um, so the people yeah. that are going to be donating are going to be anybody. Not, yeah, are going to be anybody. There's yeah. plenty. There's plenty of Facebook platforms surrounding Easton. There's yeah. You know everything Easton, Easton Mass Moms. You know those are the people that you want to touch because they're the ones that are going to rally behind this cause and actually donate to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, selfishly, I want to get in front of everybody. (laughs) So um, right, but I'm just saying they're they're a big population in this town, and they like good causes to get behind. Absolutely. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any other fundraising ideas. I mean, I, I guess most of the, my, my ideas aren't really fundraising, they're more awareness. Um, but if anybody wants to share anything that they've thought about, um, it's kind of tough right now because we're still, um, you know, in the time of COVID at the moment, but it's something to think about. Um, does anybody have any any ideas on that for the future, mostly? I mean, we could do a booth at the NRT fair. We could do something at the Lighting of the Rockery. I mean, once all these things come back online, you know, that are, are starting to happen again, then, you know, we can... Uh, does the Council on Aging or... The veterans ever have a booth like at the NRT territory or not? So I don't know about council on aging. The, the, the VFW, the Legion, they set up booths. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I did a few years ago to set up a booth, but um, it's been a while. 
So I usually kind of just tag on with like the VFW. Yeah, yeah no, my husband is a Legion member, so. Oh, cool. Okay. He's volunteer there. But I mean, maybe we could just, you know, put some flyers there and see. Yeah, we could. You know, what kind of response we get. Definitely. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Um, so, I mean, for future meetings, just, uh, just think of. Uh, think of ways that we can we can get ourselves out there um, and we, we can dive in deeper because I, I know we've been on this call for a while uh, so we can dive in deeper at a later meeting um, so unless anybody else has any specific comments um, on fundraising in general um, so let's discuss our next meeting uh, so I think, so Linda said that the deadline would be the 15th uh, if we wanted to get these flyers in, um, the tax bills. Um, we're going to kind of workshop it through email and come up with a flyer that we all like. Um, so maybe we could meet the first or second week of June. Um, you know, a month from now would be June 10th on Thursday. Um, and we could get another update on the, the fundraising or not fundraising, sorry, got that on my brain. Get another update on the uh, online payment capability. See if we could sneak that in last minute. Um, so how would uh, Ju Thursday, June 10th at five work for everybody? That's Fine with me. Um, sorry not to get off topic in the middle of that question, but I just want to bring to everybody's attention the uh, select board schedule. We either go, well, next Monday is town meeting, so that's not going to work, or June 7th is the only other time before we would put that flyer to print, correct? Mm -hmm. Linda, right? That would still be before? Yes. Okay. I think we need to get on that agenda for June 7th. Okay. So. Do you want to, do, do you guys want to meet again before we get on that agenda? Or are I you think com comfortable with me doing it now? I'm comfortable I'm, with I'm it. I mean, I think because we Because I'm the chair, but I mean. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I th I'm comfortable with that. I, I don't think we need to meet before we go before the board. Again, you know, we can if there's some sort of changes we want to make to the flyer, I think we can just email those those. Yeah, you know, I think by June 7th, we'll have the flyer. I'll have the application, you know, and 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 we'll have you know, I I, th I feel like I got an understanding for where everybody's coming from on their um, where where they want this to go. Um, so I think I have enough to share with them. Uh, we all have to go to this, or is it just you, Andrew, that's going to go? Or I'm assuming. I think I think the way it's written is that we have to report back at least once a year, but I don't know if it specifically says. Um, it could be all or just a couple, I think, would be fine. I'll go June 7th. Yeah. I think any anybody who's available to, but we're not on the agenda yet. So let's hope. No, we I know. But it, if we get on the agenda for that. Day. Yeah. Uh, okay. And I think if we can all go, we should all try to go. If not, that's fine, too. But um, that being said, uh, I mean, I really think we kind of have some solid objectives between between now and getting that flyer to print and in those bills. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to hijack your question about June 10th, but I just wanted to let everyone know that the 7th is probably what we're looking at. Okay, Do you, but Corey, you, I mean, are you okay with us uh, going ahead and, and trying to get the item on the select board before we, uh, 
iron the rest of this out. I mean, I, th I think we got an idea. Yeah, I think so as well. I mean, Linda, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think, I think we could go ahead and. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, meet with the selectmen on the seventh. We could even have our own meeting after that if you wanted. Okay. Um, yeah. Select board will, I'm sure, be give us a very clear idea of whether they think that we can just sort of go on ahead with it or not. I'm sure that they will give us good direction. Okay. Yeah. Um, Corey, remind me again who we email. I'll I'll send you an email. Um, it's Lisa Florio administrative assistant for the select board and the town administrator i'll send you an email um i'll actually I'll, I'll email her with you attached and you can see just simply just ask if there's space on the agenda and that if we could be included too that would be great provide a be, brief that, and then i'll let you go from there that would be great um yeah if you could introduce me um yeah so the yeah, so I mean, uh, I think that's a, a good timeline. Uh, we can work a few things out through email. Yeah, phone um, call, whatever. Yeah, and assuming that assuming that we um, assuming that we get on the item, I will I will let everyone know um, so that they can attend, um, and and then and then um, and then we'll be good to go. Um, so back back to the original question of June tenth, and the, and meeting right afterwards would probably be good because if they give us any feedback, one way or the other, we can um, make changes um, before before we send out the flyer. Right. Yeah, Is I wouldn't one? mind. I wouldn't mind meeting right after. Like so, immediately, you know, after. like, you know, not for hours, but yeah. What, what? My suggestion would be: Why don't we pencil in June tenth, if that's okay with everybody? And then if we, um, sure, sure. If we get on the the agenda, and we want to meet after, um, then we can do that. Okay. Um, what you know, just so that we have something on the books in case. For whatever reason, you know things change. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Um, unless anyone has any other comments or thoughts, uh, I think we're good to adjourn. If anyone would like to make that motion, I motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Uh, all those in favor of adjourning tonight's taxation aid meeting, say aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, aye. everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Bye.